Hello, this is Nick and welcome to my channel. So today we're doing episode 2 of my fountain pen basic series and today we are writing with our fountain pens. But before we write, I want to show you how to ink your fountain pen. So if you are a first time fountain pen user this uh, and you want to write with your fountain pen, this is the perfect um, video for you. So let's start with, for those of you who bought fountain pens with that came in with their own cartridges. So it will come in its own cartridge and let's pretend this cartridge is loaded with ink because it's mine is empty. And what you'll have to do really is to just open your pen, take your cartridge and just push it in. It's gonna feel hard and you're gonna be a little afraid that you might break your pen but trust me you won't. Just push it in until you hear a click or feel a click and that would because that would mean you broke the seal because there's a seal here like if you look at it like that it has a seal mine's not sealed because it's used but just push it in and then once you feel that pop it's done then just it will write it might not write immediately just keep um writing with the nib until the ink flows down then you should all be good okay so there now what if you want to use your ink so how do you ink your pens and let me show you several ways of doing it let's start with this pen i'm gonna use the purple one okay so we're gonna ink our pens let's start with this one so this one has a piston filling mechanism we say it's a piston because there's a piston inside and when you turn the knob it just goes up and down like a piston so there most converters are piston fillers let's open this this is a piston filler just turn this and you see piston going up and down and this is also a piston filler this one's with ink um, the piston is there I cannot push it up and down because it will burp ink but you turn this another kind of converter is your sack converter which is this one you just press this and it will suck up ink and I cannot press it right now because there's it's loaded with ink I think so what you do is you dip your nib inside the inside your ink vial or your ink bottle and you make you have to make sure the breather hole is inside or is submerged in ink okay so if you've seen my other video I've mentioned the different parts of your fountain pen and your nib so just to recap the breather hole is this circle here this, uh, this is your nib the entire nib the breather hole is that circle it has to be inside So let's take out the ink. If it's a piston filler, you have to make sure that the piston is all the way down. So there. Open your bottle or your ink vial. And dip your pen. And again, make sure the breather hole is submerged. So once you, once you dip it, I didn't want to show it with this pen because this converter, the Pilot Convert Con 40, really sucks. Like no pun intended it's just so bad with sucking ink up but anyway oh sorry my bad when you're when you're filling your piston should be all the way up my bad sorry so it should be all the way up and then when you rotate it pulling this the piston in it will suck in ink so it's all the way to the top dip your pen and then slowly slowly pull the con the piston up and then it will draw ink and this is why I say this sucks like I did not get so much ink with the comfort I usually do this so that my ink would go down because I can't fill it with a lot of ink see a lot of ink is stuck there because there's a there's a stopper there but anyway, that's how you fill with ink. I wish I could have shown you with this one, but 
I don't want to ink this with um actually you know what let's do that let's use another ink instead so I can show you here So, make sure your piston is all the way up. Dip your pen. Breather hole should be inside or under the, under the ink. And then, just slowly pull up your piston. Just slowly, slowly, slowly do it. There. It's filled up. And that is how you fill your pen. And I'm not a fan of doing this. Mainly because it... Wait, enough. Mainly because it saturates the feed. And it's... It tends to write really thick. So what I usually do is do like that. To normalize the flow of ink. But let's do that later. Okay, so... Not a lot of ink has gone down. I don't want to open this because it's gonna be an inky mess. So let's just deal with it later. Which means this pen will run out of ink really quick. <laughs> and then another method of filling ink, which is my favorite way, is to actually use a syringe. So I just need a syringe. Preferably a blunt needle, but if you can't find one, it's fine. You can use a normal hypodermic needle, just be careful. And what you do is, you just take out the cartridge or the converter. In my case, a, a cartridge. And just take your ink. So let's use this ink. And this is especially useful for ink where the the breather hole can't reach can is not submerged in ink. So let me just draw like usually the capacity of converters is 0.5 ml to 1 ml. Usually yeah, around like that. 0.5 to 0.75 ml. So let's just grab just grabbing 0.5. Usually cartridges have more capacity, but yeah. So this one looks like it's 1 ml capacity. So let's do that. Okay, so there. I have it all filled up. I ran out of ink already. I can still draw it some more. It's not too much effort to put in. So, and then, just pop it back in. If you want to reuse your, your cartridges, all you need is also a syringe to clean it. So, there. So, it's all there. And, let's assemble the pens back together. And, I will show you writing samples of the pens. Okay, so let me introduce you to the pens that we're going to use. So this is the Sailor 1911S demonstrator. This is the Pilot 78G demonstrator. This is the Twisby 580 Diamond Lava. This is a Pelican M600, Pelican Sovereign M600 Vibrant Orange Pen. This is a Pilot Metropolitan Retro... Retro Pop? Orange... And this is a Lamy Safari Vista. So they have, among them, they have different kinds of nibs. And let me share with you the different kinds of nibs. So you have, nibs can usually be um, separated between, oh, this is out of ink. Okay, I can't show this to you. but Because it's out of ink and I need to clean it. But, so, anyway. It's Asian versus Western. 
usually your Asian brands are Pilot, uh, Platinum, Sailor. These are the big brands, big Asian brands. And there's also Nakaya, but it's Pilot. Like their premium brand. Anyway, with Western, you have Lamy, Kaviko, um, uh, Pelican. Karen, Karen Diach, and what else? Oh, your very famous Parker pins, your Schaefer pins. What else? Actually, a lot are Western brands. And the thing is, Asian brands or Asian pens write thin. And they write thick. So what that means is that for the for the unit of measure that we use in terms of nib sizes, Asian nibs would write thinner than their Western nib counterparts. So what does that mean? So you have your kinds of nibs which are U E F E F F M B. This is ultra, extra fine. No, let's add them there. Ultra, extra fine, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and music. This would be the common nib sizes that you would see. And there's a lot more. There's a lot more nib variations, but these are the basic ones. And what ha what usually happens is that when you see an UEF Western, it's actually um, synonymous to an Asian EF. So you go one one size lower. So let's say this is Asian, and then. The Western counterpart would be, I don't know if this one doesn't have, this would be UEF. Fine would be EF. Their medium would be an F. The Western broad would probably be a medium to broad. Both of them. So, there. The thing with broad is it's a flat. It's a flat. Uh, it flat. It writes flat, versus their normal nib, which writes uh, on a rounded line. So let me show you. This is. I have several pens, and again, it's the the, the thickness still varies by maker, and even within the same maker or manufacturer or same brand, it still varies a lot. There. So here I have a. An Asian uh, fine, but this is a gold nib, so it writes a little thicker than your steel nibs. But this is an Asian Go fine. Try to sit down. And let me show you. Do I have a Western fine? I don't have one. And this is an Asian. This is extra fine. 12, 11, 10, 9. Here's an eight, Asian extra seven, fine. So you six, can see how five, thin those lines four. are. Yeah, I don't no. I don't have an Asian M. It's Ten. supposed to be this Nine. one, but it's out of ink. Ten. And here is an Asian broad. Oh, not this pen. One, two, this pen. And you'll notice the broad pen is right squarish, like. I do my down lines like that. If I move the angle of my pen, it has very thin lines. So you get the line variation of thin and thick, thin and thick. Whereas your regular nibs that are not stub or broad nibs actually do not have, even if you change the angle, it's gonna be the same.
So there. And. And then here is a, these are western medium. So you can see how thick the lines are. They're almost as thick as your, your Asian bold. But they're not square or they don't, they don't have an edge. So there, and that is oh, and that is how you write with a fountain pen. You grip it, which is actually the point of this video, but I forgot. So the way you write with it is you grip it here. Um, it's, the the nib should be pointing up, not like not this way. It should be like this, and you don't write at the ninety degree angle. You write at the around the forty five degree angle. There. So that's how you write. If it skips, it means you're not writing at the right angle. Although some pens are forgiving like this pen. Some pens are not. This is why I love, this is one of my favorite pens, the Lamy. It has, it has a triangular grip. So you won't make a mistake of holding it the wrong way. So some pens do skip if you're not holding them properly. Yeah. Usually, the ones that have that problem are broad pens. They have, um, they have a right angle. See, it would skip if I don't write with it properly. So there. I hope you learned something new. Let me know in the comments. Are you using fountain pens now? What fountain pen are you using? And if you have fountain pen questions, need help on using fountain pens, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If I can't answer it. I'll probably make a short video answer um, like if it's hard to describe via comments I'll probably do a short video and upload it and tag is like frequently asked counted by questions or something just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer you and I'll talk to you soon talk to you later bye